Hey, it's Rob, aka The Author Creative, and welcome to Retro Production Episode 2. In the previous episode, we took a look at this, the Casio SK-1, which was probably one of the world's first truly affordable sampling keyboards. But Casio wasn't the only company getting involved in sampling in the 80s. Their longtime rivals in the consumer music space, Yamaha, were also keen to get in on the sampling action, and they brought out a whole range of their own sampling keyboards. And that's going to be the focus for the video today. The most well-known of these was the VSS-30, a small and very plasticky toy sampler aimed squarely at the SK-1's target audience. It was about the same size and shape as the SK-1, and came with a better range of sampling features, although it lacked some others, such as additive synthesis or multi-track sequencing. My initial plan was to get hold of a VSS-30 so that we could contrast it directly with the Casio SK-1. But after giving it some thought, I decided against this. For starters, the VSS-30 has developed a bit of a cult following over the years, having been used by various artists including Sugaros and Owl City, to name a few. So they don't come up very often, and when they do, prices can be pretty outlandish. There's also not very much you can do with a VSS-30 besides sampling. It has no rhythm generator, and only a couple of very basic preset sounds, making it pretty much a one-trick pony. Luckily, the VSS-30 was not the only sampling keyboard that Yamaha made. The first was actually the VSS-100, released in 1985. But this is fairly rare, and also has a pretty limited feature set. So, the real jewel in the range, as far as I'm concerned, is this, the VSS-200. This was the very last keyboard in the range to be released by Yamaha, in 1988. It has all of the same sampling functionality as the VSS-30, but it also contains a YM2420 FM chip, which is a cost-reduced version of Yamaha's famous OPL2, used in many different keyboards and sound cards during the 80s, most notably the AdLib and Sound Blaster cards. So, this gives the VSS-200 a whole range of FM sounds, as well as sampling capability. And best of all, it doesn't attract the same cult status as the VSS-30, so it can be found for much more reasonable amounts of money. Let's take a look at what it can do. The VSS-200 has 100 preset sounds. These are all created using the YM2420 FM chip. My suspicion is that the choice of 100 sounds has nothing to do with memory limitations, but just because the LED screen only has two characters, making 99 the highest number that could be displayed. By starting with 00, zero this could then total 100 sounds. In any case, although there are 100 presets, many of them are pretty similar. Several, in fact, are almost identical. For example, folk guitar and jazz guitar, mute trumpet, and trombone. In fact, the majority of the sounds can be grouped into just a few categories. Reed sounds, brass sounds, plucked sounds, organs, and metallic sounds. As I mentioned earlier, the YM2420 FM chip is a cost-reduced version of the famous YM32, or OPL2, chip. Compared with its full-fat relative, the YM2420 can only generate two types of waveform, instead of four. And the channels are not mixed using an adder. Instead, the chip uses time-division multiplexing to play tiny segments of each channel, one after another. The result is a very noticeable grittiness to the sounds. Here's an example, with some compression added to bring out the noise. By contrast, here's an older Yamaha keyboard, which uses the original OPL2 chip. I've set up a similar bass sound here. There's still some artifacting on this, but it's much less noticeable. The VSS-200 has 10 drum patterns. These are created using four sounds. A kick, a snare, 
and a hi-hat sound which is extended to create an open hat or ride cymbal. And then there's also a tom sound which pops up occasionally in some of the fills. The keyboard has a synchro start feature which starts the pattern when you press a key. And there's also an intro, fill and ending for each one. But you can't combine the intro with the synchro start. There are three different accompaniment modes. Auto bass is the simplest mode. In this mode you can still play the keys normally and the keyboard will try to figure out what chord you're playing. It will then add a single note bass line to match. Single finger mode plays a chord based on the key you press. You can change this to a minor chord by pressing the black key to the left and a seventh chord by pressing the white key to the left. Auto bass chord gives the most control. If you play a single note, the accompaniment will be limited to just that note. But if you add more notes, the accompaniment will expand to include them as well. The FM synth has a total of six notes polyphony. So when using the accompaniment mode, you will only get two note polyphony in the melody section. This is because the bass and the three chord notes use the other four. But there is a way to cheat this. If you use a sample instead of an FM sound, then you still get the four note polyphony from the sampler chip, in addition to the four notes used by the accompaniment. Although the VSS200 can technically only select one FM sound at a time, you can use the chord accompaniment mode to play up to three different sounds simultaneously. If you choose auto bass mode, then you can play the chord sound in the left hand, separate to any melody sound you've chosen in the right. If you play three notes simultaneously in the left hand, then an additional bass sound will be added as well. By changing the rhythm type, you can select different combinations of chords and bass sounds. Here's an example of this in action. Let's look at what sets this keyboard apart from its FM siblings, the sampler. As I mentioned earlier, the VSS200 actually contains a complete VSS30, or more accurately, the YM2416 chip used in the VSS30. And in fact, since all of the original VSS30's functionality was contained within this single chip, it's technically possible to access additional features, such as the arpeggiator or demo tune by adding some additional buttons. Something I'm keen to try in a future video. Given that this chip essentially represents a completely separate keyboard, this gives the sampler section in the VSS200 an oddly detached feeling from the rest of the keyboard. For starters, in the FM synth, polyphony is six notes, but in the sampler, it's just four. And since these are completely independent, you can actually play up to 10 notes simultaneously by combining FM sounds with samples. Polyphony is also handled in a different way. In the FM section, the oldest note will be stopped in order to play a new note, but in the sampler, you can't play any new notes until you free up a note which is already being played. Finally, the sampler can't play the whole range of the keyboard, Instead, you can set it to either the top or bottom sections, with the remaining keys playing an FM sound. Compared with the Casio SK-1 from our previous retroproduction episode, the sampler on this keyboard is quite a bit more advanced. But given that Yamaha's YM2416 chip came out nearly two years after the SK-1, this is not surprising. And in fact, this chip is actually Yamaha's second sampler. The VSS-100, Yamaha's first sampling keyboard, released in 1985, uses a completely different chip with only basic pitch shifting functionality and monophonic sample playback. To add a new sample, 
Press the sample button. Sample length is approximately 1.9 seconds, which is a little longer than the SK-1's 1.4 second length. Where the Yamaha really pulls ahead though, is in the different ways that the sample can be processed. To begin with, it's possible to add additional layers to your sample sounds. Pressing the Hello. Override button will allow you to record Hello. additional material, which is then combined with the sample already stored. Hello. This can give some great choir effects. Or lo-fi leads. Or even retro chord stabs. The attack, decay, sustain and release can all be adjusted independently. Of course, you can apply ADSR envelopes to samples on the SK-1 as well, but only the preset options listed above the keys. In addition to ADSR, there are also a series of effects which can be added. Loop, unsurprisingly, loops the sample. But unlike on the SK-1, here you can adjust the loop length. Loop, loop, Interestingly loop, though, loop. the shortest loop is only about 800 milliseconds, meaning you can't get the same type of grain effects that you can with the SK-1, which can produce loops as short as a few individual milliseconds. U-turn plays the sample forwards and then backwards. U-turn, uh, it can be combined with loop to cycle the sample backwards and forwards. U -turn, uh, new U -turn, uh, In some cases, this can create an almost seamless loop. Reverse simply does what it says on the tin and reverses the sample. Reverse. Echo is essentially the same as loop, only the repeated sample gradually fades away. In fact, all this really does is loop the sample and then add a long release time to the ADSR envelope. Fuzz adds some distortion to the sample. It's quite subtle, but it can add some pleasing harmonics on certain sounds. FM modulates the pitch of the sample. Oddly, the scale of the pitch shifting used does not correspond with any usable melodic series, such as a fifth or an octave. Instead, it goes up a major eleventh above the root, and then down a major sixth below it. Since you can only adjust the speed of the modulation and not the pitch, this makes the effect pretty unusable, other than as a way to create some sci-fi type effects. AM is a bit more useful. This essentially adds an LFO to the volume of the sample, producing a pleasant tremolo effect, a bit like a Leslie speaker on a Hammond organ. Although in this case, the modulation is unique to each note played, meaning you can create some interesting pulsating effects by staggering the start times of the notes. One of the features of the FM and sampler chips being completely separate is that you can record sounds directly from the FM synth into the sampler. First select the FM sound from the voice bank, then press from voice bank. This literally just plays middle C and records it into the sampler. This function is actually somewhat more useful than you might imagine. To begin with, you now have the ability to apply a custom ADSR envelope to the sound, something which is not directly possible with the FM synth. You can make some completely new sounds in this way. You can also apply all the other effects to your sample, for example, U-turn. The other advantage of this feature is that you can double up sounds between the FM synth and the sampler, since the sampler doesn't cover the entire note range of the keyboard. Melody mode is the default, with the sample on the right hand side. In this mode, you get an overlap of four notes. This isn't particularly useful, 
but if you set the sample to the left side, in chord mode, then you get a full octave of overlap, plus an additional four notes above. The value of this is that you can modulate the sample in various ways, and then play this in unison with the original FM sound, producing some interesting effects. For example, if you pitch shift the sample slightly, you can create a really pleasant chorus effect. And you can also create some other cool effects by layering up a looped sample with the dry original sound. Or by adjusting the volume of the sample and using it almost like an echo. So that's the raw VSS200. But now, let's see just how far we can push it with the aid of some modern production tools. First, we need some drums. For this, we can make use of the VSS200's rhythm loops. In their raw form, these are a bit naff, but they'll give us a reasonable starting point. I'm going to slow the tempo right down and then record a few loops, trying to capture all of the individual drum sounds. Now we can map each individual sound to a drum rack. OK, let's focus on the kick first. This is pretty flat and lifeless, so let's double it up and use the second one to create a sub kick with a bit more punch. To do this, we can take out all of the high frequency information and then add in a resonant filter with an envelope on it to give it some pitch sweeping. We can now remove all of the low frequency content from our original kick sound so that the two aren't fighting each other. And voila, a nice punchy kick. The other percussion sounds are more usable, but we can make them shine a bit more by applying some EQ to each of them. In some cases, I'm doubling up the EQ to pull up the maximum frequency information available. To give the snare a bit more presence in the main sections, I'm going to double this up too, and then use some reverb to fatten it up a bit. By reducing the stereo width to zero, we can make the sound more like part of the actual snare. Finally, we can use a noise gate to tighten things up. Nice. Now, one thing we're missing is a crash sound. The only similar percussion sound is the open hi-hat slash ride cymbal. But this doesn't carry much weight. What we need instead is something with some noise in it. We could use the sampler for this, but in fact there is one FM patch which contains some noise. It's this one, called Fireworks. So, let's record that, and then we can isolate the last part of the patch with just the noise. Now some EQ on that, and we now have something which can stand in as a crash. Particularly if we layer it up with the open hat. For extra impact, let's double this up and add a long tail reverb to the second. We can then sidechain this behind the rhythm. Cool. Now let's figure out a bass line. I'm going to use this slap bass preset as a starting point. I could just play something in directly, but the patch is quite noisy. So instead, let's record this to a new sampler instrument. Now we can use the filter envelope to cut out most of the noise, since we only need high frequency content in the initial attack. There, much cleaner. For our first lead instrument, I'm going to use this marimba patch. Since there's no way to input external MIDI or add quantizing to the VSS200, I'll play it in manually and then use Ableton's warping functionality to quantize it. Cool, this sounds pretty good, but we can give it a bit more presence by adding some saturation and some compression. Now some reverb and echo, and finally some automated filtering to make it a bit more dynamic. Okay, now for the breakdown section. I'm going to apply a similar process again on this glass celeste patch. Play it in manually, quantize it using warping, and add some effects. First some EQ to bring out the high end, and then some echo. 
Nice, this is sounding quite creepy, so let's accentuate that by adding a second echo and automating the delay time. This will create some interesting pitch warping effects. Okay, so far we haven't made use of the sampler at all, but it will make a great basis for a lead synth. First, let's create a sample by overlaying a few layers of voice recordings. Now we can make it more like a stab by setting a short decay time. Cool, now let's add this to a sampler. I'm also going to add an additional sample layer with a hi-hat sound to add a bit of extra attack. This is sounding pretty sweet now, but let's enhance it a little further by adding some chorus and a short delay. Right, we have our main structure now. Let's fill this out a bit more with some sound effects. For a riser, let's see if we can make use of that rather useless FM effect. I'm going to start with an organ sound and sample it. Now we can add the FM effect and play around with the frequency. I've done a few different takes of this and I found one which I think will fit quite well. Now we can add some EQ and some echo. Let's accentuate that with a second riser effect. Let's start with this patch, gurgle. Now let's add a grain delay to this and automate the frequency and feedback, which will create an ascending phase effect. Now some compression to even out the volume a bit, some EQ to bring out the high end a bit more, and a bit of echo. Finally, let's use the sampler in a more conventional way to record a little vocal soundbite. This track has a bit of a darker feel, so let's go full cheese with a Star Wars dark side quote. The dark side is in our blood. Pitch shifted down a bit, this sounds pretty cool. The dark side is in our blood. And to make this a bit more interesting, we can add a stutter type effect by just sliding down the keys. The dark side is in our blood. Okay, so here's my finished track. As usual, I've added in a few extra bits and pieces, and done some final mixing and balancing. But everything you're about to hear started out as a sound from the VSS 200. Enjoy, and I'll see you again soon. Thank you.